Majesties invite into their court Rory McClellan to answer the question put before him this morning. He's going to say no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, You do not want to meet this man on the field. He is patient. He will wait for you. Don't come up from behind him. He will know you're there. Baronial, heavy champion of Karelin. Order of the Tigers combatant. Once again, now comes before you, Baron Rory McClellan, to answer the question put before him this day. No house shoes? No house shoes. <laughs> I believe. Well, actually. <clears throat> don't worry. He's got to answer questions. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Never mind. I'm totally stepping on my own. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you're all first. So, um, I have the honor to become your friend. You opened your home to me. You made it possible for me to be with my love. And, um, <laughs> It is just a, a bit of your knightly virtues, <coughs> is that you are generous. And I am very lucky to call you my friend and to be the ones here to do this for you, to sit in this place while you get what you deserve. So you have some business with your knight. This happens to be the prince too. Yes, <laughs> just, just happens. That's not ominous. <laughs> These are Omega, Darius's arms. These are my arms. Now you put your arms. Unsurprisingly. <laughs> Sunset. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> Your Majesty, I actually have the great honor, and if you do you mind if I yes, just have yes, the thank you. audience can hear me. I have the great honor today to speak of this man's art. It is important all of the things that we do that bring us together as a society. It is important that Rory is on the field showcasing the art of his fighting. It adds to the fiber of our group. And Rory does that. He does that when he demonstrates that prowess. He does that when he demonstrates the art of chivalry. 
but he also sews. <laughs> it is a very little known fact, but actually as I was thinking about speaking for you today, I was looking through some old photos and there's a marvelous photo of you sitting like this with your glasses down because you're fixing a hood or sewing a hood. <laughs> and I thought that is the point at which we become embedded. It becomes part of our lives. He's sitting on his couch at home fixing his hood, sewing his hood, so that he can also showcase his art when he walks out off the field. And that is just as important as what you do on the field. I highly commend him today, Your Majesty. This is a man who is most assuredly deserved of continuing to embed himself within the fiber of our society, but now as a field. Thank you. Is there a member of the Order of the Pelican? Your Majesties, once again, I find myself tasked by my squire. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it right. Or he's doing it right. I hate this man. <laughs> wait, wait, that was Sir Moet, my knighting. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I am Tiberius Julius Rufus Primus, master of the pelican, master of the laurel, and from far off Gaul, I stand for Rory McClellan. I am grateful that my mentor and friend, Sir Gareth, himself a noble master pelican, will carry my words, adding his strength to them, to their majesties, their court, and Rory. Anyone who knows Rory McClellan knows the quality, quantity of his work. He is a constant source of strength and support for his family, his household, and those who find themselves in need. To become a great member of the society or a peer of our realms, is to strike oneself. All right, hold on. Lost my thought. Yes, it's to strike oneself against the anvil of virtue. It is said that we are instruments of our own creation. With each situation in which we find ourselves, each interaction with others, each entry into the lists, each coaching session with new fighters, we are in a position to mold that instrument. If we strike true, we are sharper. If we miss our strike against the anvil, we are made more dull. Rory has struck and been struck true. His work with the fighting community is a testament to his cons consistency, levity, steadfastness, and strength. He has been recognized by numerous tokens <laughs> from the Order of the Rose for the way in which he conducts himself. Rory has used his time at the anvil well. He has worked himself into a strong, forthright member of the society. Rory McClellan, my friend, the great Avunikal coach, stalwart shield, is my peer and mine as well. Fair Lady of the Rose. Hi again. <laughs> <laughs> I am Duchess Keelan Indian Phelan, Lady of the Rose. And it is my distinct honor to speak on behalf of Rory. May I stand roughly here? Yes. <laughs> roughly. <laughs> roughly. Roughly. There are many qualities that make a knight. Among them are courtesy, chivalry, bravery, heart, commitment, Loyalty. I would like to speak to some of these qualities of this man. It is a very hard thing to stand up and follow your heart when the world tells you no. That is commitment. Harder still is to stand in the middle of a conflict, whether it is between households or brothers and say, these are my friends, these are my family, and I will not take a side. He is kind to those who are kind to the people he loves. And his wrath is terrible to those who are unkind to those who he loves. 
The job of a knight is a hard one. I have seen it. You have to stand up sometimes to the people that you are in fealty to because the belt comes with that fealty and the chain comes with that weight. And you have to say what is in your heart. I believe in my bones that Rory will always do that and always be true to who he is. This is the quality that I find most knight-like in him. And this is why I believe that he is my peer. And if any among you who are here or are not here today says different, I invite you to meet me on a rapier field. <laughs> Your Majesties, that is what I have to say about Rory. Is there a member of the Order of Defense to follow that? <laughs> oh, Thomas, hey, come on, Thomas. It's great. Your Majesties, Your Majesties, I am Master Thomas Delbrook, but in this moment, I am Master Jean Paul Ducasse. Yeah. And I bear his the mark. Forward. It's in here. Okay. okay good. It better be. <laughs> Unto your most gracious majesties and highnesses, and all assembled, do I, Jean Paul Ducasse, send my greetings and thanks for allowing one of my brothers to carry my words this day. I've known Rory for a goodly amount of time, and he is one of those rare people of unwavering and unbreakable word. When he is committed to a task, it will be done, for, for if it is not, then it will be over his broken and dead corpse that you will find that task unfinished. <laughs> With my own eyes, I have seen him come off the field of battle, remove his helm with one hand, in an obvious pain. He grabs a drink, caught his breath, put this helm back on, and returned to the battle. I asked him later, if he was in such pain that I could see so plainly across the field, why did he not just retire from the fight? His reply was simple and to the point. I told the unit that I would fight with him. It is this and a hundred other in instances like this that prove that this man is dedicated and unflinching from the task that he sets for himself. <clears throat> Persistence and patience are two of the cornerstones upon which the order of defense has laid its foundations. Rory, over the years, has proven to me to have these qualities in spades. To your majesties, I say this is a good thing you do this day, and this man is my peer. In service, in your service, Jean Paul Ducasse, aka Mark. <laughs> Have a member of the Order of the Chivalry. Your Majesty, so great is Rory's renown that I do bear words from the Kingdom of the Burning Sun. I, Simon Montgomery, of the Care Adam in Montgomery, <laughs> would undertake to speak for Rory this day and attest to his worthiness. I have lived in seven kingdoms and have known many who have aspired to the accolade. When first I moved to the East, Rory was one of the first unbelted fighters I became aware of. I was impressed not only by his prowess as a fellow high-level unbelt, but also as his kindness, friendship, and joy that he took in fighting. I always had to be certain to account of his presence on the opposite side of the tourney or melee field, and I knew I could count on him when he was on my side of the field. No matter who was victorious in our hard-fought battles, he was always there right afterwards with a smile, a warm embrace, and strong words of encouragement. For he is my friend, my brother, and my peer, I wholeheartedly endorse his elevation and welcome him to the Order of the Chivalry. With your leave, I would also add, chivalry is the armed defense of the naked, unarmed troops. That's all. You're naked and unarmed. <laughs> is well there a, defended. Is there another member of the chivalry who has a really comfy seat? It's not often you get this opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Rory put me into armor 24 years ago. Um, taught me how to fight told me of how he got started when he was in Drakenwald, when he was in the army, 
in Germany. And he told me of uh, one of his troops that had dragged him into this crazy game that we play. That person sent me words last week. Duke Jonathan von Trotha of Edenveld. I first met Rory when he was known as Sergeant Price. He was brought into our platoon as a squad leader. It was unlike the majority of the NCOs that I had met as a 19-year-old private in the Army. To my, to my mind, an infantry NCO was a person who loved to hold their power over you <laughs> and make your life miserable by having you do inane tasks <laughs> just because they could. Sergeant Price was different. He was not this kind of person. Despite the fact that he was only a couple years older, he seemed so much wiser than the rest of us. He was a leader to us privates, not simply because of his rank, but because of his knowledge and his demeanor. He earned our respect because he was so squared away. But he kept our respect because he treated us as adults. One day we were training in preparation to test for the EIB, which is a badge of all infantry soldiers covet. While taking a break, we started talking about the SCA. There were several of us in the platoon at that time involved in the SCA. He was very interested and started planning his own armor as we sat there on the ground resting he must have heard one of us talk about pickle barrel armor. Mine was carpet armor. That's how far back we go. Because he, about pickle armor, because as I remember it, later that night, he had purchased a large trash can from the PX and was cutting it into plates for his first suit of armor. It was not long before we had him in armor and fighting on a regular basis. It was, all, it was obvious that he had talent with rattan weapons. The cool thing about Eric was that within the SCA, he deferred to and learned from us. We were the ones who were the leaders while he was the follower. He never had a problem with this. But at first formation every morning, he was again the NCO, and we were the privates. He showed me that good leaders know when to lead and when to follow. By the time I left Germany, Rory was well established within the SCA group in Germany. I had heard bits and pieces of his adventures over the years, and from time to time we spoke or emailed. I have not spent time with Rory in years, but I cannot imagine that he is any less of a leader now than when he was in the, earliest, in the early 90s. I suspect he is even better at it now. I was really excited to hear that Rory had been offered the accolade of knighthood. I have no doubt that he deserves it. I have no doubt that he will be an example to the populace and to his peers. My advice to him is to continue to lead, but also remember when to follow. And those words from, were from Duke Jonathan of Edenville. So what do you think? You know, now I got a ball drink. I got an extra one in the back. It sits on the shoulder. It's not too late to change your mind and go the right way. Your Majesty's most wise. <laughs> Have you made a decision today? Belt and chain of a knight. Your Majesty has received before them their order of the chivalry. Is there a belt? Mm. I'm sure there's a belt. Let's get a little room. Smile for the camera.
Are there spurs? Your Majesty. Yay, household spurs. <laughs> <laughs> They're really comfy. Do they have a lineage? Lineage. Anybody want to give them a hand with this, Uncle Val? <laughs> the lineage. <laughs> Gareth presented them to me. From me, they went to Ionis. From me to Dimitri. And now to Rory. Watch when you kneel. <laughs> They're not terribly sharp, but they will wake you up. Don't wear them in a water bed. And don't wear them in a water bed, whatever you do. <laughs> Eventually, we'll put them on the right way. Is there a lovely handcrafted hood? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who, would you mind kneeling for yeah. me? Who made the hood? Uh, Miss, uh, Mistress Mika made the shell, and I lined it and finished putting it together. So huge. <laughs> is there a chain? There is. Uh, no monkeys? Uh, oh, well, you should sing that. <laughs> Singular monkey. Yeah. Singular monkey. A length off my chain. The awesomeness about that chain is... That was the awesomeness about the chain. It does have a lineage. A gift from the house of the black sword. Stormcloth of Primaris passed to Earl Chosai and then to Count Orloff. From Orloff to myself, myself to you, Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's something going on here. <laughs> Where did that lovely monkey chain come from? This, this is gifted to me by Lord. You are a singular monkey. <laughs> you are your own monkey now. You must create your own barrel. <laughs> is there a sword? Oh, yes, there is. Every good night, you should have a sword. Yes, it does look like a Roman sword, but, um, it, it, but it, it was a scotch and I took it off the bed. There you go. <laughs> it is very sharp. Have you seen it? <laughs> is it shoulder? shoulder? Nothing we can put on it. Nothing we can put on okay, okay. But we're going to give it to Astro. Because she's there. You can investigate. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there is a final piece of regalia that has a little bit of history. The history is, is I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> she painted it. And so I spent past month or two doing a little bit of research in the East. And this is settles for the East, not for known world. As far as I can tell, Correct him if he's wrong, but I believe he's right. Rory is the oldest knight ever made in the East. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is there a king? <laughs> What did you say, a crown? <laughs> there you go. I, I have put many hour, many minutes, minutes into me. <laughs> Use ten. Many, many seconds. So when you get home, she'll like it. No, it's not a walk. I wanted to, she went, because they don't make designer walkers. <laughs> so enjoy now, every good night, while they should have a sword, should also have okay. a cane. A cane. Yes, <laughs> That's what Aiden said. As long as you're carrying it. As long as you get your 10% Do we have uh, something? Oh. Yeah, well, we got a knife. Um, okay. Yeah. Here, we're going to give that to Ashley. We? We're at a, can I have a member of the chivalry who would yeah. stand with me to dub this knife? Oh, look. We Come in between us, please. Oh, hello. <laughs> hey, sunshine. <laughs> Are we sunshine? It's dull. 
<laughs> it's just pointy. It's not sharp. <clears throat> Your Majesty. <laughs> we collected. Dub you once our brother and family. Dub you twice a leader. And dub you thrice a knight of the society, Sir Rory. Wait, don't play. Oh, yeah, hey, wait a minute. I would have your chain, sir. <laughs> I really want to look good. I would have your oath. Symbolic virtues include faith, charity, justice, sagacity, prudence, temperance, resolution, truth, liberality, diligence, hope, and valor. One who exemplifies these virtues is Rory McClellan. It is written that a knight should love your neighbor as yourself, entertain strangers, be merciful to prisoners, do ill to no man, nor consent unto such as do, for the receiver is as bad as the thief. Forgive as ye hope to be forgiven. Redeem the captive. Help the oppressed. Do not consent to any wrong. Persevere not in wrath. Be humble and kind. Serve your crown and kingdom faithfully. Do not steal. Do not perjure yourself, nor let others do so. Thus this day do we, Emperor Ionis and Empress Rohonig, mighty crown of the kingdom of the East, do name this man a companion of the order of chivalry, and present to him the symbols of his station as a knight belt, spurs, and chain. Further, do we endow Rory McClellan by, with arms by letters patent, to wit, per chevron argent and gules, three shamrocks, and a tower counter change. Done this feast day of Saint Kieran the Younger, the 9th of September, on a societatis 52. Calligraphy and illumination by Master Jonathan Blackston, words by Malcolm Bowman. <laughs> Rise, Sir Knight, we have a small piece of business. Back that way. I can't stand this whole thing. Keep going, keep going. I don't like being swinging rooms. Don't hold him. He's supposed to stand on his own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, he, listen, he doesn't have his, you know, huge shield. <laughs> he knows what that means. My friend and my brother, let this be the last one we see. Love day. Or <laughs> Sir Rory, you are the of the Order of Chivalry! Viva! 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 Woo! Your Highness, come say hi to this guy. Sir, this is Sir Rory! <laughs> it's no longer almost Sir Rory. <laughs> Yeah, we're, 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 brutal. Swing it. Do you have a 
So, it is now at this time we're about to close court. We've had a wonderful day with great prowess, great friends, great elevations. Thank you all so much. Thank you for that, especially. <laughs> There being no further business, herein closes the court of their majesties, Ionis and Honig, Emperor and Emperor of the East. All rise and make way for their majesties and their highnesses. Right